long time since I was in high school. So I was I was dreamed when I was when I was a high school kid. So I was dreaming to create my own programming language. But at that time, I was so weak and inexperienced, immature. So I couldn't make my create. I couldn't create my programming language. So I, I just gave up. So I went to the university, majored in computer science, and then after graduate, I I was uh, hired as a professional programming language. But in 1993. In Japan, the bubble economy was crashed, so we had very heavy depression. Then my project was canceled, so I was not assigned job. So we are under the maintenance mode. So I had to maintenance my my X project uh, software. So uh, with time to time, we we got I got a call. So your software don't work. So I just re replied that okay, we build the call, we build the computer. <laughs> so I have nothing to do else. So I had a computer in my desktop. I had spare time. So the project was canceled. I had a spare time. I, I had a computer in my desk desktop. So I I thought it was a good time to start my pet project. So as a language geek, yeah, I was always dreaming to create my own programming language. So, so I decided to create one. So then uh, it's named after the Pro. It's just, Pro is a programming, yeah, the famous programming language. It, it is still alive and it is just famous. And then uh, I wanted to name my programming language after Joel name. So. But we had diamonds, fire, or something like that. But th these names are so long, and so I wanted to something short. <laughs> so I we came up. With, I was talking with my colleague, and we came up with the names: the coral, five five characters, and uh, and ruby, four characters. And the ruby is more beautiful. So I chose ruby. Yeah, I, I, I was happy. I'm, I'm pretty happy that, that it was the pre-Google age. That right now, so choosing the, the your software name Ruby is totally on Google. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the when Google came in, so Ruby is uh, famous enough. So uh, we had no problem. Anyway, so the Pearl, we had Pearl. Which is the which stands for the practical extraction and report language, but the many pro users are claim that the particularly ecstatic web register. <laughs> That's what they say. Now, not, not, not me. And uh, the, as a, I was a pro user before creating Ruby, so it's very useful as a tool. But as a programming language, from the viewpoint of the programming language geek. It's pretty ugly. So, uh, so I decided to create my own programming language. In so, it was just my hobby. So, I, but you know, I really love to use my own programming language. So, as a programmer, the I, I do, I did the text processing, the scripting. So I choose to create scripting language. To, to replacement of the Pro. But the Pro has no object back then. So I want a better language to replace the Pro. I don't have to, I, I, so that I don't have to use Pro. So it should, it should be clean and object oriented. And I am also a fan of object oriented programming for a long time. So it should be very good for text processing. But it's only an excuse. I wanted my I wanted to create my own programming language for any purpose. So just wanted to make my own programming language. Then I created Ruby, then World Wide Web has come. World Wide Web and in World Wide Web to implement the dyna dynamic pages, the the technology in CGI common gateway interface has come. 
And uh, the, in CZR programming, the scripting language are very good at it. So the language like Pro, uh, Python, and Ruby is getting more popular. But the, the, the popularity of the script language is a skyrocketing. So Ruby could ride on the wave. Then, but you know, the CZ, CZI technology was too slow as the website scales. So the users of the World Wide Web grows exponentially. So the technology like CGI that spawns the process for each request is too slow. So it, it comes to server-side programming. Like, the, in, like uh, a web application. Then, then the web application framework has come, like Ruby on Rails. And uh, Ruby on Rails is not the first uh, web application framework in the world. Just we had uh, other web application framework in Java or some other languages. And uh, Ruby, Ruby on Rails is not the first web application framework in Ruby. We had uh, several prior uh, web application framework. But uh, you know, the Ruby on Rails is was known in its productivity. So. Uh, some in in back in 2005, I guess, the, a guy, a famous blogger, wrote, wrote a blog entry that claimed, uh, okay, the, the programming in Ruby using Ruby on Rails is 10 times more productive than typical web development in Java. So it was so controversial. So and uh, the, a guy who created Ruby on Rails. <coughs> whose name is uh, David Heinemann Hansen, we call him DHH. And uh, he's a kind of guy uh, that, you know, the dive into the discuss heavy discussion with, uh, with fuels. <laughs> he really loves this uh, heavy uh, discussions. And then then uh, Ruby on Rails get famous after that. So we had great success in web. So many sites are working on Ruby. So many uh, companies are using Ruby, uh, including LinkedIn and Twitter. <laughs> the Twitter is using uh, using Ruby. Uh, actually, the, the original Twitter was uh, implemented the whole whole wholly implemented Twitter uh, in Ruby. GitHub is implemented in Ruby. Uh, Best Buy is using Ruby inside. Disney company is using Ruby inside. And uh, we have almost dominated the web, <laughs> almost. So, if assume suppose we choose a language, uh, choose some languages for the web, so the name would be Java, PHP, and Ruby. So, and the, in Java, we had the number of available in, the the merit of Java is number of available engineers, and it has static types that. Uh, for the checks compile time error, the detects compile time error, but its static nature is kind of against the dynamic nature of web. And the PHP is not really a language. <laughs> <laughs> Just because, you know, I, I met the last Slater who invented uh, PHP a few years ago, and I, I had a lunch with, with him. And then he said that <laughs> PHP is not a language. It's a tool. It's a tool like a toothbrush. Who cares? <laughs> I had, as a language geek, I had a different opinion. But his opinion is PHP is not like language and tool that doesn't matter so as long as it does the job. So, uh, the. So it's a PHP is a tool to solve the simplest task. So the its good point is number of available cheap engineers. <laughs> yeah. But you know, we have so many variety of the PHP programmers, but I I don't think I I don't think I, I, I should go more go more no more. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Ruby. Ruby is perfect for web system. It's concise, 
It's productive, it's dynamic, it's flexible, and fast enough for most of the cases, unless you're a filter. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Ruby is not as fast as Java, but for most of the case, it's okay. Like, a, the, the, the web, web application written in Ruby can handle the 100,000, 100 million access per month. So it's good enough for most of the case. But sometimes, like Twitter, or maybe LinkedIn, the main page, should handle the more than more traffic. So in that case, so we can replace uh, the replace the system by other language. So the most important things that at the, to create a web application or any software is no one knows which decision, which design is right. So we have to uh, explore the right decision, right design. So in the beginning of the Twitter, so no one knows if the, the very short blogging system, only 140 character, will success or not. So, and if I was, I was requested that advice for the, the site with only 140 character message, I would say that's, ins I, would, I would say it, it was insane. But, you know, the Twitter grows, uh, uh, introduced the mentions and messages or something, something like that hashtags, so they evolved to the current system, which had the huge success. The, and uh, in that evol evo uh, evolution, the flexibility of Ruby helped, helped a lot. But after they fixed the business model or the, the design of the system, so you can, they can safely uh, replace <coughs> The heavy, uh, the heavy traffic system by on top of JVM, which is very performant. So, in that sense, we have we we can safely say we have almost done it well. We have saved millions of programmers <laughs> from the other programming languages <laughs> <laughs> and from programming hell from boring tasks, from inefficient de development, from lack of motivation. This is very important. So the mo I, I believe the motivated programmers do great things. So without motivation, no one can uh, accomplish great tasks and create a great software. And uh, But yeah, we have almost done it the web. But web is not everything. We have pro a broader world of programming beyond web. Like, like I want to save other programmers. <laughs> I believe Ruby has potential to save the programmers, to change the world. So I wanted to go, we want to go beyond the web. So the, I want to introduce a few things beyond web so really can help programmers. The first one is the Fluent D. You might not know the Fluent D, which is the structure distributed logging system. It, high, it has high performance. It can handle the uh, 70,000, more than 70,000 messages per second at peak, which, you know, the, we, reason, uh, we have the buzzword name big data recently, <laughs> but you know, the whole process big data, which we must have big data. So we have this some, some other, some way to uh, aggregate the data from the large number of the large number of machines in the data center. So the many of you guys, many, of, many programmers, uh, use the syslog, the logging system, and uh, aggregate them by text file. But, you know, 
the friendly friendly is reliable, distributed, configurable, and uh, j it uses the JSON-like structure data, so that you don't have to first plain text log like syslogs. So, the big company like uh, Japanese big company like DNA or Re, which is the uh, social game company, which has a million of users back in Japan. So they use the, the thousands of machines. So they collect logs from these, these thousands of machines to uh, analyze their traffic, their access, their users. So the FluentD is sponsored by treasuredata.com, which is the, uh, yeah, the uh, Silicon Valley based company. And, uh, you can check the fluentd.org to see that. This is the different way to help programmers, especially in DevOps section. The second one is scientific computing. In scientific computing, uh, feel like uh, we have this high performance computing and data processing. For high performance computing, we, had, we have Fortran, C, C++, and Java. And the data processing line is we use the Python, R, or MATLAB, or something else, like Mathematica. For, and the scientific computing has a very interesting uh, aspect. The, the almost all of the scientific computing is, is done by non-professional programmers, so they want productivity since they are researcher in herd. So, but in the same time, at the same time, they want efficiency for, for number crunching. So they want performance. So, so it's, you know, the performance and the productivity is kind of like a trade-off. So if you want productivity, so you have to push the task into the computer. So your computer must do more tasks. So the software goes slower in general. So if programmer do the many things for the computers, the programmer uh, computer need doesn't need to do any much task, so the software generally in general so run faster. But that kind of trade off. But the scientific computing requires both. So it's kinda of, it's kinda of hard task. So even though we can replace compiled time language, the Ruby is very slower comparing to the, the fault line. But we can provide better language. So, for example, the, back in Japan, the, university, the, like the graduate student in the University of Tokyo said a prototype compiler that compiles Ruby using the type inference so into the static C. Then compiles uh, C into the the uh, uh, executable. So compiled the uh, compiled C code runs ninety percent of the uh, the performance tuned C program uh, in in best case. So you know the it is quite difficult to use uh, Ruby if Ruby runs. Hundred or thousand times slower than Fortran, but if a Ruby program runs ninety percent of the C program, so it, it is quite usable for for the price of the like productivity. So, and uh, at the same time, uh, we had the other area, which is uh, not supercomputing, but uh, day-to-day uh, -day data processing as to for the researchers. So they use Python and R. So but we like NumPy and SciPy, which is the scientific comput computational package for so Python. So we recently uh, started working on Ruby scientific programming for com for coming to year two. So the Ruby Association, which is the or the organization to promote Ruby in various fields, recently made a grant for the project 
to develop the Sci Ruby, scientific Ruby, and N matrix, the uh, multi dimensional matrix computation library this year. So I hope that would help the adaptation of the Ruby in the scientific computing. So to provide a better language to the researchers. The last but not least is embedded systems. We have a lot of computers, not PC, the typical modern PC for in the appliances. These days, the appliances are something like computers. So the, the, the DVD player has computer in it, or the robots, like this, or like this, or like this. So robots uh, that has tons of computer in it, or the mobile phones, like this, or the automobiles, like this. This is a Toyota Prius, and uh, which has, I don't know, tens of, or dozens or two dozen of uh, computers in it. So it's driven by the machines, it's driven by the software. So as the power of the software, the CPU power of the computer has become powerful, so the ratio in the systems, ratio of the software in the systems is getting bigger and bigger. So the, the software engineer working in, in the, uh, the embedded industry so requires, uh, requires productivity as well. So they wanted to do something better, better than assembly. So more productivity rather than runtime efficiency. So the computer is fast enough in an embedded system also, so they can uh, safely uh, pursue the, the productivity rather than the, the performance. They often use Lua in many fields. Lua is the uh, programming language from Brazil, and uh, it has embedded ABI and a decent performance. This is quite nice implementation, nice interpreter, but as a language, it's kind of poor language. It's, it's, that, that makes me feel like a, Lua is kind of the ripped off version of JavaScript. So it doesn't have any object system. Objects are emulated by the, the data structure are named tables. And the exception, exceptions are emulated by nested interpreter code. What if we have Ruby implemented like Lua? So, the current Lua, MR, uh, current Ruby, I mean, uh, named MRI, Mass Ruby Interpreter, or the C Ruby, the Ruby implemented in C, is not designed to be embedded in other systems. So rather, the, the, you can add the features to, uh, to the Ruby interpreter uh, adding, by adding C extensions. So you write application in Ruby. But the embedded systems, so you write application in C or C++, then some per, uh, you call the, the embedded programming language uh, as part of the system. So that's the reason behind the development of the MRuby that uh, Professor Tanaka in introduced to you. So the, M the MRuby is named after the maths embeddable, minimalistic implementation of Ruby. So in, so we have to name it, call it MRuby. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's so difficult to pronounce, so we, we name it MRuby. So it has embedding API, and then it has VM structure, so you can uh, in, uh, generate, create uh, multiple VM structure in, in the same, single process. So it, it doesn't use any C global variables so that you can, you can do the shared nothing uh, between the virtual machines. So as process, uh, process Tanaka explained, the process can be separated and the compiled by the code can be set. So no process needed for a long time. So building library can be configurable. 
So you can drop off unnecessary classes like I/O, Fire, Regex, Process, etc. Just because you know the MRuby is so so small, so you you can run the MRuby on very tiny computers like like this. So with that on the computer like that, so you don't have any operating system, no file system. So there's no room for I/O on a file or process. So you can you can rip off this, this the unnecessary class if you if you need. And then uh, in embedded system, the real timeness is required. But 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 as a language with garbage collection, uh, it is it is very difficult, almost impossible to provide a real time out, uh, hard real time, real real time. But uh, we provide uh, something named soft real time, almost real time, by the by using the algorithm named incremental garbage collection for soft real time. So uh, incremental garbage collection the split the garbage collection uh, process in and the distribute the, that process among the main process. And then, then after two years of the project, MRuby now works, and you can download it from the GitHub here under the MIT license, so you can do anything you want without any consent from the authors, me. So, <laughs> <laughs> comparing the CRuby versus MRuby, a CRuby is soon to be too old, and it's mature, the free features. Comparing that, MRuby is just released, no real world application yet, the very small core, and the uh, CRuby is for general purpose. The application should be written in Ruby, but MRuby is configurable to specific purpose and to be uh, designed to be embedded in applications. And CRuby is a portable among major OSs, but it requires POTIX API, which is a huge set of API. The MRuby is very portable. It only requires C99, and it even runs on OS less machines like this or the machines in the back or you see these small computers. This is, uh, this is the Ruby evaluation board, the FPGA MIPS compatible CPU without any OS, but it has the Ethernet serial and the USB interface. Then memory-wise, the, the program size of the CRuby is pretty huge, more than one meg, and uh, it requires big memory footprint, like, like more than 10 meg. But M comparing to that, M MRuby is very small. The, the smallest configuration, it requires uh, 100 kilo in the program size. And the uh, memory footprint is also small. It, it consumes um, less than 100 kilo um, in the smallest configuration. So CRuby has a very simple C API, and it will use the map and sweep GC and uh, focus on better GC throughput. But MRuby is embeddable in C API, which is not compatible with the, the existing C API. And it uses incremental GC garbage collection and focus on smaller GC pastime. Uh, as a concurrency, the CRuby requires GIL, which is, stands for the global interpreter lock. And as a result, it has weak concurrency. So MRuby also do not support any threads, but VM state, so for, you can create a VM state uh, state structure for each thread, so we can do the share nothing concurrency. So we, it is possible to provide better concurrency. So and, uh, as a GC wise, the bigger memory grows, uh, slower the GC become, so weak on bigger memory. So recent, recent server machines uh, has 64 gigs of memory. So in that systems, the memory tends to be getting bigger, process getting bigger. So as the number of objects grows, the, the garbage collection takes longer time. So, so it will be uh, very weak on very big memory. Uh, in comparison, uh, MRuby has incremented garbage characters that helps uh, post time, and uh, we are planning to implement the generational garbage collection in, for MRuby. 
So it can be used for various fields, like a root loud extension. So the, the company named IIJ back in Japan uh, created the prototype of the intelligent router, which, in, uh, which is implemented by MRuby. So the, M the router has uh, MRuby in it, then they program the Twitter interface from MRuby, then, then they plug in the uh, USB uh, power meter so that the, power cons the, the router reports the power consumption to, to the Twitter time to time. So you, you consume the 40, 42 watts for the last three hours or something like that. This is quite amazing. So the people in the gaming industry often use Lua, but uh, they, would, they want better language if it's possible. So MRuby would, be, uh, would have a bit good application in gaming field. Or the, since the MRuby can be used in server side, so not, it, it is possible to implement the Node.js replace instead of, uh, instead of uh, JavaScript, we can use MRuby. Actually, the, uh, a guy already implemented the interface to the libuv, which is the back end of the Node.js. So, so theoretically, we already have the uh, prototype of the replacement of the Node.js. And a lot of other regions we can use MRuby. So the, we have, uh, by MRuby, we can open the broader wide of the potential to, to help the programmers outside the web field. So we want to help programmers to, be ha to enjoy programming, to be happy, not just for web, but as many programmers as possible, including you and me. So happy hacking, thank you. So does anyone have any questions? You can just step up to the podium. I mean, step up to the microphone. Uh, I, would want, I would like to know the, the opinion about JavaScript and all the families of MS scripts are being uh, pushed by the giants, like Dart and TypeScript and that's your opinion, JavaScript and all these family of smaller mm -hmm. uh, JavaScript is pretty good language, uh, considering the situation it was born. So it was on designed only in 15 days or so. So <laughs> that's quite amazing. But still, it, there, there can be something better. <laughs> and then I, I sometimes see uh, how the, the programmer sick of the JavaScript especially in compatibility between browsers. But you know, it's not the fault of the language, but the implementation. And then for the other language, like a CoffeeScript, Dart, or the TypeScript, or something like that, so you know, the, we are going to have the better programming language. So now I, I believe it's good things. So although I, pre I love Ruby, the language, but you know, I, I'm not a believer of the one true language. So the diversity in the programming language is, uh, I welcome it. Along the lines of um, what's your opinion, um, what do you think of JRuby and also the other DM implementation Agile? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I have a little bit mixed feeling about that at all other implementation, just because, you know, that for, for example, for JRuby, so it, it helps the penetration to the uh, enterprise world. So big company like Oracle, so the, the administrator do, do not want to uh, install Ruby interpreter in every machines in the data center, but so by using JRuby, you can prepare the J JAR file, then uh, deploy them to the, the them you using the grass page or something. So it's quite easy for enterprise user to use JRuby. So the other uh, implementation so helps uh, 
promotion of the Ruby language. So in that sense, I, I'm very pretty happy with it. And uh, also I'm a true believer of the diversity. So the diversity of the implementation uh, is welcome. But at the same time, as an open source software, our resource, our human resource is very limited. So if uh, we could concentrate on the uh, sim single implementation, we can go further. But, you know, but I think it's the, the cost we must pay, I think, for the diversity, for, for the sake of the diversity. Uh, Kevin uses Ruby. Uh, the main concern is its speed. So, do you have any plan in making Ruby much more faster? Why not even slower than Perl? Uh, actually, the many people, so many people are still using one A, which is pretty damn slow. But one A is much much faster. Actually, the for the most of the cases, uh, one, Ruby 1.9 is faster than Python, faster than Perl, for most of the cases. So I, I'm pretty satisfied with the performance of the Ruby 1.9. And uh, uh, Salesforce.com and Heroku recently hired the, 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 a guy who in charge of the, the Ruby, uh, Ruby 1.9 virtual machine. So he's now working on full time on Ruby so he's working on the improving the performance for Ruby 2.0. So I expect the Ruby 2.0 be, will be faster. Uh, I don't know how much, but at least faster than Ruby 1.9.3. So you can have the performance uh, increase in the future. Can you comment about uh, the object model for MRuby? Is that going to be compatible uh, with Ruby? And uh, all the meta programming and all those cool things about Ruby will be also available on MRuby? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the object model, uh, the, M the syntax of the MRuby is fully compatible with, with 1.9. And uh, the object model is from the uh, Ruby side, is uh, totally same same object model. It is the same object model. But uh, the class label is a subset of the uh, full Ruby, C Ruby. So we lack some uh, methods or classes, including some uh, important methods like eval. But you can, you can implement by yourself by using the, the C programming. So the, all the meta, meta programming features is provided, or you, you can implement them using C, uh, C extension. Hi, Max. Uh, as a daily Ruby, as a daily Ruby user, uh, I'm very, very interested in how do you use Ruby every day. For example, what kind of operating system do you use to write Ruby, and what kind of IDE do you use, or mm -hmm. even the like, text editor? What kind of mm -hmm. what are your choices? Yep. Uh, I use Ubuntu uh, 12.04 uh, on my ThinkPad, uh, and uh, I use I, I don't use any IDE. I use Emacs. So <laughs> yeah. then uh, I use which one? Gov uh, GCC and what else? <laughs> Yeah, basically fully Emacs. I, I don't use I don't use Windows at all. I use sometimes yeah, I use my Mac. I own one. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question. How can you compare the uh, Ruby with the Python? Uh, they are both great languages. And uh, I, me and uh, Guido who invented Python has different opinion is some uh, something like a Python. It, the way of the Python, right, way of the Python is that there should be a way, and uh, and preferably only one way to do that. Do it. And uh, Ruby is uh, Ruby follows the pro uh, pro principle that, that there's more than one way to do it. So Ruby uh, provides the uh, Ruby encourages the diversity and. Uh, uh, freedom 
of the programmer. The same uh, Python sometimes restricts the freedom of the programmer, but to be a better programmer, in their opinion. So I, you know, there's no right or wrong in the principles, but you know, we had different opinion about that. Then at the technical side, the, they, are, they are both great programming language, and uh, uh, Python can do great things, Ruby can great, do great things. Um, on the topic of languages, what do you think about functional programming as relates to Ruby? I mean, I see a lot of people in the Ruby community working with Haskell, for example, and there are a lot of people who are hacking functional functions inside of Ruby, mm -hmm. but you don't get the concurrency of the processing. Is there any thoughts on how that would work, or what do you can do about that? Oh, uh, well. Uh, functional programming is a great way of the programming, but at the same time, I, I don't believe the, uh, the all programming can be done uh, can be done in functional programming just because you know the functional programming is to do the, the typical uh, iterative uh, iterate, iterate, I, <laughs> I can pronounce iterated pro programming in, in functional programming is pretty. Uh, difficult, like using Monad or something like that. So, so in in that case, is the scripting language or in in Ruby, like uh, like in Ruby, is much much pre much easy and much preferable. So, the we are gradually adapting the functional programming feature in language like Ruby. Like uh, we provide some kind of lazy evaluation in Ruby 2.0 and uh, we provide a map and reduce in, uh, in Ruby. So the, you can do, you know, the Ruby will be the, some kind of the, the mix of the object-oriented programming and the functional programming. And uh, but there is the other way of the, so functional programming shines, but, but I, I'm pretty happy with it. We could just switch and do a quick setup. So feel free to check out the Fukuoka companies in the back. I believe there's some food and some, all oh, the wine's gone. Um, but help yourself to whatever's left there.